Hello, what's up everybody? This is your nutritionist on the go, Kamal Deep Singh Archila from Edu Diet Nutrition and I'm back with another video. Uh, now this will be the second video in our series of cardiovascular diseases, the heart diseases, okay? So if you have not yet watched my previous video, do watch it so you know you can catch up with the link that what we are trying to do here. Be a little patient with me because I like to describe things in detail. So your patience is appreciated guys. But if you want to learn more about nutrition, about how heart care about your health and uh, how you can take care of your family how you can avoid cardiovascular diseases or if you do have cardiovascular disease how you can control your symptoms so these videos are going to be life-changing okay so in this video I am not going to you know discuss much about nutrition but I am going to discuss about a few diseases that are related to heart okay and uh, I want to share a message in the end of the video, so do stay till the end, okay? This message is actually important for everyone, the doctors, the patients, and uh, the dietitians also, everyone. So in the following few minutes, I'm going to explain you a little brief about uh, some heart diseases, okay? Now, I cannot cover all the heart diseases because there are so many, but I am only going to discuss the most prominent ones and those that are directly linked with lifestyle and dietary factors. When you do not have a good lifestyle and you do not have a good diet, these diseases prevail, okay? So first of all, let's talk about one that one disease, uh, which is uh, like a category of diseases that is congenital heart disease in which all the valve issues and uh, the, the nerves and veins issues as well as if there is a hole in the aortic wall of your heart. So all these heart diseases uh, which a person or patient has since his birth, his or her birth. Okay, so these are congenital heart diseases. They do not have any direct relationship with diet or lifestyle, but uh, a little bit of better lifestyle and diet will certainly help you uh, but going for an invasive method to correct this problem is the ultimate key. So apart from that coming to cardiovascular diseases the number one is coronary artery disease okay in simple words the uh, the vessels the arteries of your heart or the arteries that are supplying the blood to the muscles of your own heart are being damaged okay now there can be calcification in those um, in, in those arteries they can you know lose their flexibility they can be inflamed or they can be narrowed or there will be some plaque deposition or a clot deposition so all sort of these things which lead to the inability to transport fresh blood and oxygen to your own heart muscles now this will lead to chest discomfort, to chest heaviness, because a certain part of your heart is not getting oxygen. Every cells require oxygen, every cells require glucose. We need fresh supply of oxygenated blood to every cell of our body. And if there is a blockage in your artery, uh, there will not be a proper supply. So that damaging tissue will actually cause you chest pain and chest discomfort. We usually call that angina in our term. And uh, these angina pains or the stable or unstable angina pains can take some severe form when they start radiating to the back or to the shoulder or to the left arm of the patient. So these things need to be considered very uh, seriously. So if you do have experience of any such issues, immediately rush to the hospital for uh, a thorough examination and medical care. Okay, so do not take these things lightly. This can also cause cardiac arrest, so that leads to immediate death. So I'm not trying to, uh, you know, demotivate you guys or make you guys scared of it. I'm just telling you what happens and because we see it every day uh, in our line of work. The second disease related to the cardiovascular system is pretty common nowadays. It's called pulmonary artery disease. So uh, very, very much similar to what we have discussed before. The only difference here is there is a blocking or narrowing or damaging to the arteries that supply blood to a certain part of the body apart from the heart. Okay, so these things can happen in your legs, in your, in your arms or anywhere else. That means there is an obstruction due to some form. Maybe there's inflammation or the, there's a plaque deposition or a clot deposition or there might be a, a narrowing of arteries which are restricting the blood flow, again leading to the no supply of fresh oxygenated blood to that particular part of the body. 
So these things can be really painful and uh, sometimes they might even, you know, be fatal because uh, these plaque clot, if they are, you know, try to uh, be removed by an invasive method, they can spread into your bloodstream and they can even go to your heart or your brain and they can block it and you might experience some stroke or other forms of uh, heart attack or so. So these things are very common nowadays. The, the major factor contributing to both the coronary artery disease and the pulmonary artery disease are basically lifestyle factors and inflammation. The next is cerebrovascular diseases. That means, again, there is some sort of blockage or no supply of oxygen or fresh blood going to different parts of your brain. So the brain cells will actually exhaust and die and the person or the patient can be unconscious and that can even die in this situation. The next diseases are very common and in fact nobody really thinks that this can be a dangerous thing because hypertension is in trending now. Everybody has hypertension. Everybody is experiencing high blood pressures in a trend. Why is that so? Too much salt, uh, not enough exercise. You do not relax enough. You do not exercise. You do not have enough potassium. So I will be making a totally different video only on salt. So we will discuss all there and uh, we will also talk about hypertension in the upcoming videos also. The next is dysarrhythmia. That means there is a disruption in the rhythm of your heartbeat. So if you know how a heart works is basically it, it, it pumps the blood. It contracts or relaxes based upon an electrical signal. So that electrical signal basically sets the rhythm to the heart. There are some external factors uh, which are sometimes are electrolytes which actually cause dysarrhythmia. So the rhythm of your heart uh, gets disrupted. So the heart pumping, pumping action will not be as efficient as it should be. So this can also cause us some uh, serious troubles. The last that I'm going to discuss, but not the least one, is inflammation. So there have been, uh, what the recent studies are being showing, they are trying to find a link between inflammation and almost all the heart diseases that we have just discussed. So whenever it comes to inflammation, you know what's wrong with your diet. Okay, you're taking an inflammatory diet. We all, a majority of us are taking an inflammatory diet. So we will work on that and we will discuss it. Uh, in further. So these diseases like uh, uh, coronary artery disease, the narrowing of arteries, the plaque uh, formation in the arteries, or the thickening of arteries, calcification of the arteries, all these are caused by uh, lifestyle factors and dietary factors. So the message I want to give is to all the doctors, okay, it is my humble request to all the doctors that are working in the field of uh, cardiology, that would be medicine or surgery, do recommend your patients to visit the dietitian, okay? If you do not have a dietitian in touch, hire a dietitian, all right? So lifestyle and dietary changes are a majority part of a cardiovascular disease patient. I would contribute one third credit to medicine, one third credit to diet, and one third credit to lifestyle when it comes to the longevity of a cardiovascular disease patient. A cardiologist which wishes for your health and your longevity will certainly recommend you to a dietitian because he also wants you to live a longer and healthy life. Even if you have to take some medicines for that, you have to make a lifestyle and dietary changes. So if he does not recommend you to a dietitian, change your cardiologist ASAP. The second request that I want to make is to all the clinical dietitians that are working in the hospital. So it's good if you are being in touch with so many patients, so many heart patients, try to treat every heart patient, every cardiovascular patient as your family member. Do educate them, put some time in them, go through a consultation with a patient for about 10, 20 or sometimes even 30 minutes, sometimes up to an hour. Sometimes they give me a compliment that is, this is the first time a dietitian has ever consulted them in this way. I feel proud of myself for doing it, but I also feel shame that why aren't the other dietitians doing that? Why aren't we taking some time for our patients? Do educate them. They come to us in very high hopes. So guys, this was up for now. In the coming next videos, we're going to break down all the lipids and we're going to understand what's in your lipid profile test.